So unfortunately, as things happen with my website, certain links will start to um, just not work anymore. So again, I'm looking at on, on a laptop at my own website. And I think Rick Render's website having a link to it, which I link around down here. I've also found, as I'm explaining, townships, counties, Little Rock. So the person who printed my picture, um, even though it says Newark on the back of it, he, you know, when he died, he, they stayed, they said that he was from Little Rock, the township, but his um, headstone says Plano, and that is where Joseph Smith III lived for like 16 years in the 1860s, and he was traveling there since the year 1860, October 1860, he was going to Kendall County and visiting all of his saints there, um, but what I'd added was a map and this got thrown off, so I need to edit it. 1875 map of Kendall County, and then you can see the townships really well. And so it's funny that that they state on the Joseph Smith papers that Joseph Smith III moved to Plano in 1865, and they're referencing the memoirs of President Joseph Smith III which I've read and I've looked at that exact spot where he talks about in January, 1866. So maybe he technically bought, I'm sure he bought the house. Maybe, maybe that's what they're counting. These little discrepancies, but they state that he um, moved to Little Rock in 1870 and then returned to Plano in June, 1880. I haven't found evidence of that. Um, the evidence that I have found and stated before is that when they did census, because they give their evidence is the census records. Well, the census records for J.S. Vivens always said Big Grove, but he lived in Newark. And you see here he is living with his father and mother. And then in between these 10 years, his father dies. And they even state in the Low Lanthrop, um, the family history book that I've referenced, and I have a link here now, which is great. I have an actual link to that old book with the exact page and everything. It's really exciting. Um, stating that Alice went to live with her son, J.S., who lived in Newark. But when the census records comes along and she's already living, here's Alice, 69 years old, living now with a 38-year-old J.S. Bivens. It still says Big Grove and not Newark, but... So I believe that they did the same thing for Joseph Smith III, so even though he was still living in Plano. And I read in his memoirs, he said, I, I lived there for 16 years. He lived in Plano for 16 years. I don't think he moved to Little Rock, um, which, which isn't, it's still really close. He's still in Kendall County, right? But, but here's Newark. I mean, this is where my picture is printed. It doesn't have a sun stamp. And so it was either before 1864 or after August 1866. That's all that we know. And so that was something Gowan Weaver told me about. So it seems pretty clear that, you know, if it was after August 1866, well, Joseph III was there. He was living there. And then his mother was taking the train tracks to see him. And these train tracks go to San Francisco. They don't go down into Nauvoo, um, but this one just about goes, there, there weren't train tracks that went straight to Nauvoo, but this goes to some cities outside of, out of Nauvoo, where Emma was, and, and then this link that I had to Rick Grinder's website has disappeared, but what we have now, so if you click on it, it's going to take you to the way back machine now because Rick Grunder explains and it's, it's a great historical, I, I would consider this a historical record, being able to see the family album, like all together. I don't know 
if John Hasichek bought the whole album or just some of the pictures because he owns now the cartridge Z, but I've, I've chosen to just give credit and reverence to uh, reference to Rick Grender because I had found it here. And then you can see that this is really a Smith family album. And that's an 1860s cartridge of Azid. And then the daguerreotype you can see here in this paper that I was a part of. And so I really was in charge of getting permissions and talking to the community of Christ a lot. And I would just talk to the archivist, right? But I also was letting them know since 2019 that I was working with Tegan because I didn't know we were writing paper at all. I just said, oh, she asked for this or that. And, and then we Skyped and then they said, don't tell, you know, anyone like what we've said until we get published and then you can reference our paper, right? So anyway, but they, they knew who I was working with, what was happening. Because I had to fill out paperwork. But they gave us um, paperwork that for the daguerreotype, so you can read this and see the very oxidized metal daguerreotype that was re-photographed also in the 1860s. Same thing with my picture, it was copied from a daguerreotype, hers was, except mine on this oval cut, they cut around the picture when they printed it off and then um, glued it to the cardboard. But with Emma's, they just kept it like this. I think Julia just wanted to see her mom. She didn't want her mom's hands cut off. She just wanted to see the whole thing, which because she did that, you can see the background really well. And so the daguerreotype was in great shape when she got this photographed, whereas today it's in horrible shape. And I do wonder if if we didn't have this, we didn't have Julia's, you know, writing Mrs. Joseph Smith and saying this is David. And so it was his son, Albert, that had donated. And we got paperwork verifying that Albert had donated the daguerreotype version of this, um, which this oval, then is there's a matting all around that. And that's why there's a mark there. Um, but there's a website saying this is an Emma, you know, but, but there are many verified pictures of her as an elderly woman. This is her face. That's the same face as the woman in these other photos known by the sons that wrote, this is my mother, you know, or whatever was written. I'm not sure what was written on some of those, but they, it's, it's known. This is, this is Emma Smith. And so a woman was asking me about this on um, YouTube and Saints and Script had just deleted a comment. I responded twice. So I'm like, I'll just make a video. Um, so I won't show the comment or state her name or anything. Um, and maybe it was YouTube because I just referenced, I, I didn't give a link, but I'm trying to tell her where to go on the internet. I don't know. I really don't know, but that's what's why well, I don't like getting in the comment sections because you can't share links. But on my other channel that I do allow links, I mean, not links, I allow comments. Like, I don't want to allow links. Like, I, I am too concerned of anything getting downloaded on my computer because I don't trust people's links that might seem super benign and then they're hacked into your computer like that just because you clicked on a link or you opened an email and a link was attached. Um, and unfortunately, there's just a growing number of people that I don't trust right now that I know don't have my best interest in mind and do not care. I don't think they care about truth. But yes, yeah, see, here's Albert. So is Albert the son, the one child of David Hiram and his wife there because he just, he had a breakdown. He definitely had a breakdown soon after. So, but this is a family album. And so my picture came from a Smith family album. I still have hope that someday we can find out who that Mormon from California is that bought all the pictures. Like there were a ton of pictures in this family album and they were sort of sold separately to different people. So 
because I, I know the person that owns this now, but I want to give credit to Rick Grinder because I found that here. He's the one that scanned it, right? And is David Hiram in here? Yeah, there was another picture of David Hiram. I might have skipped over. That I know it was a different person that bought that one of him when he looked younger. And so on the Wayback Machine, you can sort of click around and see how the website changed. And then you can see, oh, that it sold. And you can also go back to February 2003. That's so interesting. You can go back to there, see how it looked when he first posted this website. So there's a picture of him, but there's one of him that was much younger that I thought was in this album. Uh, there you go. So then you can click on this. So the last time, because yeah, I knew this was active in August. So I don't know why the website was like shut down before. I don't know if he added different pictures before. But yeah, things are never, um, ever gone from the internet. You can, you can shut down a website, but yeah, the Wayback Machine still keeps it. So I was trying to find the exact picture that of David Hiram, but I know someone that wasn't the same person that owns the cartridge seat of Emma. But yeah, it just, it's too bad that they don't always stay together in the same album so you know these people are all related. So it's good to keep this website accessible so that people can know because there are websites claiming that this isn't Emma Smith, even though we have elderly pictures verified as her with the same um, sort of droopy left eye or really right eye. And, and you know it's her. And so this woman is just asking, like, how do we know it's Emma Smith? And I was just giving them information. I'm not putting anyone down, but it just kept getting deleted. So I'm like, well, I'll just kind of reference it in a video. Um, but yeah, the links are still here. They're updated to go to the Wayback Machine. Um, yeah, pl please read our paper. Make sure this link still works. I don't know. I was getting scared earlier today. I think it just doesn't work on your cell phone. Um, it wasn't working on my cell phone today, but but it's free. It doesn't cost anything to read it or download it. Um, but you know, I, I know I'll probably get made fun of today. You know, it's just really, it's just too bad that, you know, people are so focused on the hairline. That's just all they talk about. I'm like, what about his face? You know, to me, I look at this and I, I see this. I see the swoop. I see the swoop. It, that other, other images I have seen don't have the swoop. Like these very unique, you can almost see a line right there and you can see a line, but you see that in some of the artwork um, of Joseph Smith, which clearly was painted over. The forward facing painting, I think was painted over and I don't know. But you can see when you sketch the outline of the forehead, so I'd, I'd quoted someone, DJ Bodden, mentioning all well, the, he didn't state my name or my picture, but I was like, he's probably talking about my picture. But then he started calling anyone that agrees with Shannon Tracy, a bad artist. So I'm like, um, this is mean, so I'm just gonna, I'm done. Um, and I kept not wanting to talk about the skulls, but he kept bringing it up and bringing it up. He wanted to argue. I'm like, I'm not going to argue with you, you know, but he was concerned that these experts would trust 
heaven forbid see and give any credence to Shannon Tracy's book in search of Joseph, which is him quoting the work and words of five other men that were in the same room together. Anyway, there's photos of them all in the same room and all of them are focused on which school is Joseph Smith. So sketchy, if you want to see what um, contour sketching is, look at that book. Because uh, that is a word, but it was usually used with plastic surgery. Just letting you guys know. I was researching that the other day on Google Scholar. I'm like, it's not this that I'm doing right here. And usually when I was looking at different studies and things, they actually didn't use lines. They used dots so that you can still see the general shape under you can see what's underneath, right? And so in my dynamic YouTube video where I put the line there and I take it away and I put it there so you can see I'm pointing out this furrow in the eyebrow or different things like that. Um, so when I take that and superimpose it onto his face, it all lines up extremely well. Obviously, this doesn't go to the jawline and then there's the chin. So it's an extremely well, even right there, this is showing how far it's receded is how far that is receded. But it goes on the wayside right here. But you can see this is not symmetrical to here. And obviously people can have very sim asymmetrical faces. Um, and then you can also see that the death mask used to show a very receded hairline. And so this is, I believe it said, it, it just said, um, do I not have the link? I need to put the link on there. So it links to the a church news article and said it was just from the church's archives. Um, but when you look at it and look at some nuances on it, it matches the glass plate negative collection of Carter from the 1800s. So it was before they threw a bunch of plaster on it. And you can see how drastically different this is. And obviously when I photographed it, it was not at the exact same distance or angle that I think Carter took it. So it was almost impossible to superimpose it perfectly, even though it's the exact same death mask, you know, that, that explains photo distortion and all the weird arguments people get when they don't understand it. It's just like, okay. Just read a few scientific papers and it should sink in. For some people, it just doesn't. They just still don't understand that. But despite that, it's very clear that this is not camera distortion. They, they, they cut this down. They cut the death mask down and put plaster. So you're thinking that this is his hairline, but really his hairline goes much farther back, looking at older photos of the death mask seen here. You can see a clump of hair on his head. And then we look at the skull. So I'd, I'd had some of the statements up for a hot minute. But this line and just this odd curve. There's, there's a normal curve right there, but right there you can see this is my sketch of the school and you can see the, the full pictures online. But this matches up perfectly. This odd, perfectly straight line matches up with where the skull is shattered. It, that's broken bone right there on the skull. So even though we don't expect because of, you know, put a distortion of this to line up perfectly, but it, it lines up pretty darn perfectly. And there's six doctors that believe this is Joseph Smith's school. And you can see that step deformity. You see those orbital bones are slanting this direction. And so a lot of these photos, they, they none of them show, besides my picture, that drastic of a step deformity. <sighs> Where his left eye is a lot lower than his right. You see that boom coming down. So that's what Dr. Herod had mentioned. Um, you can see this video from 2020 where I'm showing how different, but this is, you know, I, I took the midline in between his eyebrows and nose and sketched a line from there to there, you know, 
and then someone claimed to find the exact same thing well it, we just know that just everyone knows that when i say like who found it out but it just it just is just trust me you know i'm like yeah i already know you're watching my channel it's just like it's just weird i don't know but you can look at the artwork and see what you find. Um, I definitely think that the fact that it matches perfectly up until the point where there's light distortion and the area where his death mask just looks really damaged, it that does not disprove it as Joseph Smith. And the forehead width is actually really, really good. When we look at life drawings and look at it superimposed here. The forehead is really, really good. So you can see right there, that lines up perfectly. And then this lines up really good with, even though it has that shape on this side of the head, we look at some better photos of the forward facing painting. You could see an odd highlight in that shape. But I know that yeah, I'm I'm not the expert that should check on this, but I, I'm sure an expert could go in and check on this and see how layered is this, you know, to see if there's a layer underneath here where this just was skin tone. And that David Rogers was giving him a normal hairline that he really had. But then he went all, let's uh, have some artistic liberty and get you out of your bad mood and give you perfect hair and give you this little swoop that Hiram has, even though Joseph's hair didn't do that. You know, I think he probably looked at Hiram and just thought he had fantastic hair at this point. You know, by 1842, and Joseph was already losing his hair and had less hair than in Hiram, so that you can see sort of the little dots there that it, it really the width of the face, the mouth, the chin, the width right there, it goes off right there, obviously, compared to the painting. But this wasn't his hair in 1842, anyway. His hair did not look like that at all because we have so much artwork from 1842 by Sutcliffe Monsley, but so, so there's a girl that just was getting really, you know, just just thought all these pictures I was seeing or paintings of Joseph Smith were just weren't him and also didn't like my picture because of the hairline. It's just really like, how did we become this shallow? I don't know, but I, th I see so much more goodness in his face um, and kindness that I see in these other alleged photos that you can't fake. You know, I can just, this is the same expression in that eye to that eye. Just even the curve of this is just, is perfect. And the fact that you can see his eyelashes going into his eyes, you can see that, you can see the shape of the eyebrow matches, like it, I'm not doing any more right now, but. So that's my update. On my website, so anytime something changes, I you can just trust that I will let you guys know. Just like even if I find out that I was wrong about anything, I'll make a video and update you. And that's why I have so many videos because I went from knowing nothing when I started my first video and just analyzing the alleged photos. Didn't own one, had no investment, no emotional investment other than I was starting to have anxiety about where is this one you know I thought another one could be him but but the man on eBay looked at this one and compared it to all the pictures of the sons and just really that's what convinced him but other than that he didn't mention any of the stuff that I have found out he never mentioned Newark being close to where the sons three of the sons at least at some point lived. I know David Hiram definitely lived in Plano from his letters. And 
Alexander's wife had a child in Plano, I think in 1869, but I, he seemed to mostly stick around Nauvoo. I, I, I don't know. His wife really was attached to Emma. She, she was like her mother. And, um, so they generally just stayed there until, until her death. And, um, but yeah, his left eye shape and just the, these unique features of the eye that I can see with the suns. I can see in my picture for sure. The shape of their left eyebrow. Not just super well, even though he's at a slight angle, you're definitely not going to expect the right eye to line up quite so perfectly, but. And then it's pretty profound looking in the picture of David Hiram. Seeing the mouth lines up in the eyes and his hairline is just as receded as the man in my picture, but he's 16. He's 16 years old and his hairline is right there. The hairline's the same. So it's just absolutely ridiculous that people just want to ignore it, um, hide it away, and then push this other one to the forefront because they knew that we were trying to get, we were submitting for publication summer before last. They, they knew it was happening. So they just threw it out on a descendant of Joseph Smith's, basically website he ran just declared that he thought it was him you know I'm sure he probably did I don't necessarily think he lied that he thought it was him I just it isn't so I very strongly still believe that this is a picture of Joseph Smith but everything that I know but that you basically he just didn't know the things that I found out and keep finding out as time goes on I just keep finding out more evidence. I just was intrigued that possibly the father of the man who printed my picture is the Elisha Bibbins that they mentioned in Mark Sticker's book paper that knew the Hell family and was teaching her when her father was converted from deism, right? But it 100% was. So how could they not talk to each other at least, you know? And I think there was a short window of time when they lived in the same close to each other, that J.S. Bibbins was really declaring himself at least as a photographer. Because I know there was a huge fire in Newark um, when it got to sometime in the 1870s. So I think that's why most of his work is still just 1860s stuff. Because maybe he lost his equipment and just didn't want to buy it again. I don't know what happened. But I was reading that in one of the books or one of the newspapers, I can't remember where I found it, but yeah, it's just too, too fascinating, but they definitely think it, you know, I'm not going to quote their emails, but I mean, there's just been different conversations that were a lot more very direct. So some people have read this and really thought, oh, well, they found a major difference. So it's not him. And I'm like, no, that didn't happen. Uh, they were just more confident at one point to say there was an identifying feature and they still, they just left it as we think this is an identifying feature as opposed to this is, you know, that was the only thing that really changed. But then I found actually a lot more than that, um, which is pretty exciting. But this video has already gone on too long, but um, to that poor woman I tried responding to two or three times. But, you know, she might have gotten, sometimes you get the alert, even if a comment is deleted, sometimes you get the alert and you see it. I don't know, but I, I don't think she saw it. I think Samson Scripta just deleted it, and I'm just telling her to go. I'm just explaining Rick Grunder's website, but again, maybe YouTube heard me. Maybe their bot said if you mention the word website, your comment's just deleted. I don't know. But the fact that I don't allow comments just has nothing to do with 
you know, just the hateful, hateful things that people said this summer definitely hasn't made me want to bring it back. But I just wanted to be careful of anything I said to anyone because there's just so many weird things going on with a lot of liars and just ridiculous things that have been said that are just not true. And I didn't, uh, there are a handful of people I didn't want to in interact there, right? Were really were harassing me and I didn't want to be aching them on not knowing I was talking to them or not. So, because people are just meaner when they can hide behind a random screen name. They'll just say whatever they want and put people down and hurt them and just not care. Whereas in person, they'll just be a little bit more careful of what they say, right? And sometimes I'm not super careful what I say in my YouTube videos, but, you know, it... I definitely I do my best to be as careful as, as can be. So I don't know. It was just weird, weird day today. So, but I I I am excited that I found that map. I think that's just really cool that you can see the townships and the entire county. So then you can see how it was broken up and that these census records are really generally just mentioned. See, this is, this is what they were using as a reference saying that he had moved from Plano to the city of Little Rock, but it always mentioned the township right there. So he never left the township of Little Rock. So it stayed the same, but I guess by 1880, it mentioned actual Plano. So they started changing how they did the census records later on for whatever reason, but <sighs> yeah, it's just too many very unique features, things that line up and it's just, yeah, anti-Mormons don't like my picture, but they love that other one. That just should say a lot. That's, it says a lot. Have a good day.